I really love to watch Quizera and Quisha interact with their moms and other members of our gorilla group. It's great to know they're going to grow up with gorillas, especially considering the difficult beginning that they each had. Our gorilla group began in 1980 when we brought Samson, our silverback male, from Buffalo Zoo in New York to Brookfield Zoo. At Buffalo Zoo, he had been with adult females but had not successfully reproduced. Here at Brookfield, we introduced him to our adult females, Alpha and Babs, and within a year, they were both pregnant. In late 1981, Babs gave birth to Becky, and Alpha gave birth to Aquilina. We were all so excited and happy to have a healthy and reproductive gorilla group. Samson was a great leader, settling disputes when necessary, and Alpha and Babs were model moms. In 1985, Alpha gave birth to another infant, Jabari. He had a great group to grow up in, two big sisters to play with, and Samson was a gentle father, often playing with the kids and protecting them when necessary. For the next three years, our gorilla group was healthy and stable. In early 1988, we decided to expand our breeding group to include Basa, an adult female gorilla from Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. She was successfully introduced to the group, and at that time, both Alpha and Babs were pregnant again. Unfortunately, shortly after Basa's introduction, Samson became quite ill and died in March of 1988. A week before his death, Babs gave birth to Quisera, and about six weeks later, Alpha gave birth to Quisha. These are Samson's last offspring. Their names are significant. Quisera means to hope. We were all really hoping Samson would pull through when she was born, and Quisha means the last. Samson's death was a great loss, not only to our staff, but to the stability of our gorilla group. After his death, there seemed to be some turmoil among our females. Basa was very interested in the babies and was even seen trying to touch them. Both Alpha and Babs became very protective of their infants. Basa suddenly rushed in and grabbed Quisha off of Alpha's breast. She ran about five feet and Alpha jumped up and caught up with her and a sort of tug of war ensued between the two. And it was apparent immediately that the baby's arm was injured. He was no longer using it, and it just kind of dangled limply at his side. X-rays show that Quisha had a broken right humerus and numerous superficial scrapes. The following morning, he was taken to an orthopedic surgeon who set his right arm with two metal pins and closed incision site with stainless steel sutures. He returned here to the animal hospital for five-day round-the-clock care. Because we felt it was important to get Quisha in with Alpha as soon as possible, after five days, the orthopedic surgeon felt as if his arm had healed well enough to try this. We gave Alpha access to Quisha for a portion of the day for three consecutive days. Alpha showed some interest at first, but it soon faded, and it was obvious that she wasn't going to care for him. We were very disappointed at this point, but we had no choice but to hand raise him. Quisha was 20 days old. Four months later, our other gorilla infant, Quisera, had a problem. Keepers noticed first thing in the morning that Quisera was vocalizing loudly, fading in and out of consciousness, had her arms crossed over her chest, and her fists were tightly clenched. She was immediately removed and taken to the animal hospital for medical evaluation. Medical tests showed no overt problems. We decided to keep Quisera out for one week for her condition to improve. After one week, our veterinarians felt her condition had improved well enough to put her back in with her mother. Although we were surprised that Alpha had not accepted Quisha, we were more hopeful about putting Quisera back in with Babs because they had been together for six months. The day we put her back, we gave our entire group access to Quisera. Things did not go well. Quisera was bitten by her mother Babs and also thrown around a holding cage by her half-sibling Aquilina. The introduction was immediately stopped and we decided at this point to pull Quisera for hand rearing. She was six months old. Further medical tests, which included a CAT scan and EEG, showed that Quisera had a fractured skull and a small cerebral hemorrhage. Exactly how and when these injuries occurred is not known. After the infants were injured, we tried to get them back with their mothers again as soon as possible. Both Alpha and Babs had reared young before successfully. We knew that they had the capabilities to be good mothers. They'd been rearing these youngsters just fine up until the time that 
that the injuries occurred. And so we felt that we had a fairly high probability of getting the infants back with their mothers. This, we felt, was extremely important because for gorilla infants to grow up and be normal gorillas, they need to grow up in an appropriate social grouping. And this appropriate social grouping is with their mothers and with other members of the species, of the social group. Um, we know that when infants don't grow up with their mothers and with other group members, that they can learn some inappropriate behaviors that later on in life makes it more difficult for them to be integrated into a group and to reproduce. If you think about how gorilla infants learn, it's not that much different from how human infants learn. Infants learn as they grow older by trying out various behaviors. Those be behaviors that their parents give them positive reinforcement for, they continue to perform. Those behaviors that they receive negative reinforcement for drop out of their repertoire. Well, if you think about gorillas, it doesn't happen all that much differently. A gorilla infant will try a whole variety of behaviors to see what works. The problem when humans try to raise gorillas is that humans can't give the appropriate gorilla signals. They can't tell a gorilla infant really what's working and what isn't working. So the gorilla infant grows up with humans and develops a repertoire of behaviors that aren't really gorilla approved behaviors. So for these reasons, we felt that it was extremely important that we make every effort to get Quisha and Quisera back with their mothers as soon as was reasonably possible. We chose to raise Quisha and Quisera right in the gorilla holding area so they could become familiar with the sights, sounds, and smells of the place they would eventually live in. We set their playpen up in full view of their mothers and the other adult gorillas and provided them with numerous stuffed animals and toys for stimulation. They also, of course, had each other for companionship right from the start. We started feeding the infant gorilla Similac and gradually added baby cereal and baby food and eventually added raw fruit, vegetables, and monkey chow, which is the diet of our adult gorillas. Throughout the hand-raising period, we conducted daily play sessions with Quisha and Quisera. These sessions lasted one hour at least, and at least one keeper was present. They took place in gorilla holding cages or in the keeper alley, always in full view of their mothers or other adult gorillas. Quisha and Quisera became very confident in their surroundings and became very comfortable with and familiar with their mothers. We went through several steps to prepare the kids for the introduction. We decided to try wearing a gorilla suit during play periods to accustom Quisera to a large black furry moving creature. One of our concerns was her reaction to the adult gorillas. Quisha seemed pretty comfortable and would touch them through the cage mesh, but Quisera screamed and wouldn't go near them. The kids weren't fooled by the suit for a minute and climbed right on us. We'll never know if this helped, but the suit did provide comic relief. Another ploy we tried to help get Quisera used to the adults was a metal mesh door that we installed between their sleeping cage and the adults' cages. It had three-quarter inch holes and allowed the kids to have olfactory and tactile contact with the adults by sticking their fingers through the holes. In addition, we had made a creep door that reduced the size of the shift door opening between two cages. This way, if the introduction got too tense and baby needed a timeout, he or she could slip through and mom couldn't follow. Something else we decided to try was separating the kids during play periods. They'd never really been apart very much, and since we were planning to introduce each kid separately to each mother, we felt it would, it would be a good idea to get them used to that. We started out taking one kid up to the exhibit with a keeper to play and keeping the other one down in the holding area with the keeper during play period. We felt that at 15 and 16 months, the kids were ready for the introduction. For the first introduction, we decided to go with Alpha and Quisha. Alpha was a much more experienced mother and a much calmer animal than Babs. 
Huisha's attitude toward the adult gorillas had been pretty positive all along. He'd always been the one to go up to the cage front and interact with them. Babs was a fairly high-strung animal and fairly tense, and Huizera was the same. And we did not want a repeat of our earlier reintroduction attempt when Babs had tried to bite Huizera. We were all getting pretty tense. We really felt like we had prepared for this. Um, looking back, it's really hard to know whether the steps that we took were beneficial or not. We hope that they were. We think that they were. But ultimately, once we put the kid and the mom together, it was up to them. We would have some limited control over the situation, but they would decide whether it was going to work or not. We just weren't going to know whether we had succeeded until we opened the shift door. The shift door is open. Alpha walks through the shift into the cage adjacent to the creek, walks over to the creek, puts her head through. She's standing. Quisha enters the cage with Alpha, comes to the cage front. Alpha goes by the creek. Quisha remained relatively calm when he found himself in the cage with Alpha. He's looking at Alpha. Alpha approaches Quisha and then moves away from him. He climbs the cage front, continues to climb the cage front, keeping an eye on Alpha. Quisha climbs the cage front as Alpha approaches. He stays up for at the first, at her. Quisha avoided Alpha. Quisha comes down off the cage front, walks by Alpha, looking at her over by the creep. Alpha approaches him at the creep. She actually touches him. He crouches. She's standing over him. He remains crouched. She sniffs him. He sort of moves away. After a short time, Quisha allowed Alpha to inspect him. He turns around and looks. Quisha is actually playing with Alpha, beating on her back. She's just sitting on her elbows, looking around. He's mouthing her, beating on her leg, pulling on her leg, really having a good time. Um, Alpha just seems nonchalant, gets up, moves away. Quisha follows her, tries killing him, rolling him around. As early as the second day of the reintroduction, we were relieved to see play between Alpha and Quisha. Stands near the creep, looking through, moves away. She's sitting at the cage front. We decided to put Quisera in with Quisha and Alpha in hopes that Quisha would act as a buffer between the two. Quisha approaches Alpha, he's playing with Alpha, rubbing up against her, looking like he's having a good time. She nuzzles him. He has a play face. She's starting to Alpha play. was very gentle with Quisha. He's back against her, he grabs her in the face, she tickles him again, rolls him over. He's laying on the floor. Quisera comes over and grabs him, pulls him away from her, wrestles him away from Alpha. Quisera appeared to be upset by Quisha's contact with Alpha and repeatedly Quisera pulled him away from her. We were afraid we were losing some of the bonding we had gained over the past few days. So we stopped that introduction and started introducing Quisera to Babs. But not too upset, goes back in. Babs approaches the creep, sits at the creep, looks through, and then moves away. Just watching Babs. We waited three days for Quisera to come through the creek. With the creep removed, Babs initiated contact. Babs puts her hands on Quisera and then stands up. Babs approaches the shift door, walks through the shift door and approaches Quisera. Quisera crouches. Although it took longer than Alpha and Quisha, Babs and Quisera also formed a bond. Babs is actually carrying Quisera football style. Finally, the two mother infant pairs were reunited. Babs comes through the shift door carrying Quisera football style, walks past Alpha into the other cage. He's checking out the other cage. There was some tension between the mothers, and their infants stayed close to them. But within a few days, they began to interact again. Quisha and Quisera sit near each other eating. Quisera touches Quisha, continues to eat. They look pretty content. After two weeks, the mother-infant pairs were introduced to the exhibit. At this time, we saw the most interesting relationship change take place. Babs assumed the role of foster mother and began caring for both infants. 
The final step in the socialization process was the introduction of the moms and kids to the rest of the group, three younger males and one adult female. And after three months of introductions, the group was let out onto the exhibit and Babs continued to care for both infants. Over the past two and a half years, the situation surrounding our guerrilla group has been filled with positive events and tragedies. At the present time, Quisha and Quisera are over two years old and are permanent members of our exhibit group. They appear to have overcome the effects of being separated from their mothers and hand raised. Although a lot of time, hard work, and emotions have been invested in these infants, our reward was seeing them back in a social situation. Hopefully in the future, they will be normal, healthy, and reproductive members of the gorilla population.